In this video, I'm going to introduce a test automation framework called Gage. Gage is a framework for user journey testing. As Martin Fowler describes it, these tests verify a user's journey through the system. User journey tests are higher up in the test pyramid and are usually written against the UI of an application. These tests are different from unit tests that are lower level on, in the test pyramid and can easily be written in a programming language like Java. Traditionally, these tests have been hard to write because it's hard to express the intent of a user using a system with a programming language like Java. For example, expressing the user journey of buying something on an e-commerce website or applying for a loan is much harder to do in a programming language than in plain English. Gage aims to make this simpler by splitting the definition of a user journey test into an English-like specification called Markdown. So this is how you would define a user journey test in Gage. As you can see, these are plain English sentences, and it's much easier to capture the intent of a user with a simple uh, format like this. Gate specifications can then be implemented in any popular programming language. As you can see, uh, this is an implementation of uh, a gate specification in JavaScript, and you could do so in any of the other popular languages. So let's take a look at how to get started with Gage. Gage is essentially a CLI using which we start with creating a Gage project. As I mentioned earlier, you can implement Gage tests in a number of programming languages. Now I'm selecting to implement my tests in JavaScript. And so I create a Gage project tailored for JavaScript with the Gage in a JS command. This will create a gauge project for you with all the dependencies required to write and run gauge tests, including the awesome Tyco testing library and a version of the Chromium browser. We'll get to the Tyco library a little later in this demo. So first, let's take a look at uh, what we get after creating a gauge project. You'll see that Gage created two folders, uh, one for specifications, and this is where the markdown files with test specifications go, and the test folder are where the implementations go. So since uh, we initialize this project as a JavaScript project, you'll see a sample.js file in here, and this is where you would start with your JavaScript implementation. Now let's implement a real-world user journey test. We are going to write a gauge test to buy some of my favorite hot sauce from this website. The process is generally going to include logging into this website, selecting a product you'd like to buy, adding it to cart, and finally checking out your order. I'm going to open up an existing gauge project with a simple specification of how to define this user journey. Gauge also comes with integrations for, popular, for the popular VS Code IDE, and I'll show you the rest of this demo from VS Code. So we'll start by taking a look at the markdown for our test specification. As you remember from earlier in this video, when you initialize a gauge project, you get two folders, one with specs, which are the markdown specifications of the user journey, and one with the test implementations. So in this case, we have implementations in JavaScript. So looking at our markdown, it has exactly the sort of information you need to define a user journey. For a scenario like this, a user would need to log in with some credentials, add something to a cart, and finally view and check out the order. The implementation looks a lot more gnarly with the code that actually drives the browser, writes stuff into input fields, and finally clicks on stuff to check out your order. You'll notice that we use a library here called Tyco. 
for the browser interactions. And we'll get into Tycho a little bit more and we'll see how the implementation with Tycho actually makes these tests a lot more resilient and a lot more robust. The VS Code integrations allow you to run and debug your specifications right from the IDE. So let's run the specification and see what happens. You'll see that Gage runs the specification in visual mode using the Chrome browser that was installed when we installed Gage. You can also run Gage tests in headless mode on CD servers. Once the specification is completed, Gage provides you a, comp a comprehensive report of the test execution. Again, this report can be integrated into your CD workflow. And you'll see here that it shows you all of the specifications that ran, any that failed, um, and the, gen the time that it took to execute these specifications. I briefly mentioned a library called Tycho earlier. So let's take a look at what Tycho is all about. Tycho is a JavaScript library for reliable browser automation. Tycho's smart selectors and ability to handle dynamic content make UI tests inherently more reliable. Tycho provides a clear and concise DSL for browser testing. So let's explore this DSL in Tycho's REPL. Tycho's DSL is simple, and that makes it understandable with simple actions like open browser to get a browser instance, and actions like click and write to interact with page elements. Tycho also provides powerful selectors that don't require you to tie your tests to brittle XPath syntax. So I'm going to use this um, DSL to do some tests against uh, an e-commerce website again. So I first need a browser instance, so I'm going to open a browser. So you see here that Tycho opens up an instance of the Chromium browser that was installed when we installed Tycho, which was actually installed with Gage. And uh, I now want to navigate to a website, so I could use uh, Tycho's go to action and go to uh, the website I want to test. I can then do simple actions like click, and I want to now log in, so I could just essentially click the login link by um, just using Tycho's login action. And you'll see that Tycho finds the element on the page. If you see, I just mentioned the name of the link and no additional selectors for the element. I now need to enter my credentials so I could uh, essentially just use uh, Tycho's write action and write my email. And now you'll see that I start using these smart selectors from Tycho. So I'm in this example, I'm using a selector for an input field with the name username. And that fills in my email in the username uh, element. I can then do something similar for the password field. And now I need to click the login button. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click login, but I'm going to use Tycho's smart selector called below and click the login link below the readme link because I don't want to click this login link all over again. So doing that will uh, let me select um, elements on the page uh, just based on their visual proximity to other elements. So now that we're logged in, uh, we can select the product that we want to buy. So here again, I'm just going to use uh, Tycho's click action and pick uh, my item. And you'll see that this then uh, allows me to uh, add this item to the cart. So now it's just a series of actions you want to perform um, to go all the way from here to your checkout. 
And I'm probably not going to go through the whole checkout flow, uh, but I think you get the idea of um, Tycho's interactions with the browser. So uh, maybe view this card. And, uh, and I could keep going with clicking the checkout and filling out the checkout form and um, finally submitting my order. When I'm done with my test, I can use the dot .code feature in Tyco to see the JavaScript code that Tyco generated behind the scenes. I can also save this code away in a JavaScript file. So I'm going to call this my checkout test.js. And uh, if I come out of Tyco, you'll see that uh, you have a JavaScript file now with all of the Tyco test um, actions uh, saved in this JavaScript file. You may now use uh, these steps as an implementation in your gate specification or just use this as, a, as an isolated script. So I hope this video was useful in understanding the gauge test automation framework and the Tyco browser automation library. Thank you.